Think about your day. You check your email in the morning, maybe listen to some music on your way to work, use a fitness app during your jog, and do a little bit of online shopping in the evening. Did you know that artificial intelligence is behind all these activities? It's so integrated into our daily routines that we often don't realize it's there. California Senate Bill 1047, or as it's more formally known, the Safe and Secure Innovation for Frontier Artificial Intelligence Models Act, is stirring up quite the debate. But what exactly is it, and why should you care? On May 21st, the California Senate passed Bill 1047, which aims to put the brakes on unchecked AI development by introducing stringent safety regulations. Here's the gist of it. Senate Bill 1047 targets what it calls frontier models. These are AI systems that require massive computational power to develop. The mill mandates thorough safety checks before and after training these models, aiming to sniff out potential risks and harms. Developers will have to comply with rigorous safety protocols, mitigate risks, and report any incidents to a new entity called the Frontier Model Division. Non-compliance would result in penalties that escalate from 10% of the cost of training an AI model for the first violation to 30% for every subsequent breach of the bill's provisions. These fines especially affect startups and small companies with already limited budgets and resources. The primary objective of 1047 is to make sure that AI is safe. Right? I think that's the basic just of it. And of course, everyone wants everything safe, right? We, we want cars to be safe, we want airplanes to be safe, we want walking on the street to be safe, right? So I think that's all good. But I, th I think the fundamental issue I have with 1047 is, for instance, if someone makes a knife like to cut butter, right? It can also be used to, to kill people, right? You stab someone with a, with a butter knife, right? So should a butter knife manufacturer be held liable? Should the person who designed the butter knife be held liable? Right. And my, my big issue with 1047 is that it's making the people who created the AI, like developers, AI developers like myself, liable for for future bad uses of their model. Basically, SB 1047 is a proposed law that's making its way through the California legislature right now. This bill is drafted to attack underlying model researchers, scientists, and developers, and among other things, it's trying to place civil and criminal liabilities on developers of AI models, mm -hmm. as opposed to focusing on the malicious users of those models. As proposed by this bill, overseeing these new laws would be a, a frontier model division, which is kind of like a new DMV they want to form, that would have the power to propose requirements on startups, on researchers, on academia, that would dictate if a researcher or an engineer could ultimately be thrown in jail or not. This bill is now slated for a California assembly vote in August less than 60 days away. This is a incredibly dangerous piece of well-intentioned but incredibly misguided regulation. Though it sounds good on paper, the bill has its critics and the reasons are pretty compelling. First off, bias. AI models are like black boxes, complex and ever evolving. Expecting developers to identify and disclose all potential biases is nearly impossible. Take a social media company using AI to flag harmful speech. When the AI failed to adapt to changing language trends, the platform certification was revoked, leading to tragic consequences for some users. Then there's the innovation chokehold. Strict regulations mean more money and time spent on compliance, less on actual innovation. I think what's going to happen with 1047 is, you know, right now California's Fortune has some of the most leading edge AI companies like OpenAI and Anthropic. But I think what happens is if this comes into effect and you really, they really do hold developers and anyone associated with this liable, like civilly and criminally, then a lot of those companies are going to move out. What we do is you outlaw the use, the, the bad use. You don't outlaw the actual technology, actual designer developers of this. So that's the thing that I just makes no sense. Do we think that countries like China or North Korea or like Russia are going to like stop their AI development. I mean, they're going to, they're going full steam ahead. It puts the country at a disadvantage. It puts California at a disadvantage. We, we're going to lose some of the most iconic AI companies in the world, right? Anthropic, OpenAI, they're going to move out because nobody could afford Meta, right? Those are some of the most iconic companies developing these models are going to move out because you can't do business like that. The bill also dives into murky waters with its ethical and legal standards. Vague guidelines can lead to inconsistent interpretations and legal headaches. Developers might hold back releasing potentially groundbreaking AI tech to avoid liability, delaying benefits that could save lives. When things start happening that uh, do need regulation, then we should regulate them. But to anticipate it, you know, it'd be kind of like saying, 
oh, the automobile is coming out and we think that somebody's going to make an automobile that drives 500 miles an hour and nobody can control. So we're going to just outlaw cars now. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's a little bit this approach to AI where like, well, we think in the future that there's going to be a sentient model. Yeah. Now, like nobody has <laughs> built anything anywhere that's on the way to sentience. Yeah. And so kind of doing that, you know, like what we have is these great things that can tutor kids. So no, you can't tutor kids because like maybe somebody will come up with an idea that will make sentient AI. So we have to cut off the tutors. It's it's that kind of thinking, which is, uh, you know, quite scary, I would say. Yeah. So, you know, one of the arguments we make, because we're, you know, we're yeah. not we're not anti-regulation, um, you know, as we described in the blockchain section, like there, yeah. there are clearly regulations. Or, or, or a model that can like build itself into like this super genius thing, which also nobody's figured out how to do, by yeah. the way. So, you know, we're actually trying to get a regulatory law passed, yeah. you know, this, this Fit 21 bill. We're actually trying to get, so it's actually a regulatory structure. Yeah. So we're actually trying to get new regulations created because the government yeah. the government won't do it. Um, but, you know, one of the things we argued in our meeting with the White House um, yeah. on AI policy was, you know, look, there are going to be there are going to be issues that come from AI, but let's they should be regulated. The regulation should happen at the application level, not at the technology level. I think it's not just AI, but, you know, like my, my dad, he used to pick cotton in the fields. As a kid, that, that, was, that was his job, right? And now there's not a single human, at least in the United States, I know of, that picks con by hand in the field. And what technology allows us to do is it allows us to live better lives. So like you and I could talk via Zoom, which is kind of cool, right? Although we're, we're both in Palo Alto, but we don't even have to get up our seats, right? It makes it very easy. We have better movies than we ever had before. We have better houses than we ever had before. We had better better cars, right? We have better, like, people are living longer and longer than ever before. And by not adopting technology, what it means is that there'll never be a cure for cancer. It means that people will die, you know, of Alzheimer's. It means that that for people under 30, the number of cause of death is, is driving, right? Cars. And so that means millions of people, young people in our country are going to be dead because we don't have autonomous driving, right? So life would be just a lot harder, a lot worse if we don't use technology, especially AI technology, because I think kind of like intellectual ability is, is highly leveraged. Manual work, right? There's leverage, but not as much as intellectual work. I think intellectual does a lot more leverage. And so it's a really, it's a real big shame because that means that the quality of life for the next generation will may not be better than the current generation. And what we all hope is that the quality of life for every generation will be better than the next better than the previous. And the only way that it happens is if we leverage technology. Because leverage, leveraging, te leveraging technology means there's more for everyone. Like there's a new, you should try it yourself. There's a new run runway AI Gen 3 that, that's a video maker, it generates videos. So that means everyone now could have equivalent to a million dollar studio. In fact, you can use it for your video. You could generate all these videos now using runway Gen 3, right? And so just imagine a high school student with zero resources can now make blockbuster movies, right? And think about that. Think about the amount of creativity that allows, right? Think about the amount of happiness that could create, right? And so all that could get shut down, which I think is just terrible, right? Imagine during a dark age, right? In Europe where they, you know, they had the Black Plague and all that stuff and nobody knew how to read or write and everyone died, died very early. Imagine if, if, we were, if humanity was stuck in that rut for, you know, the next 2000 years. But think about how sad that is, right? Versus right now, we're kind of in a place where, like, my kids are living much better off than I did, right? And I'm hoping that their kids will live much better off than, than they do, right? But don't let, that can only happen through better technology. Security is another hot button issue. Regular audits could expose proprietary information, making companies vulnerable. Plus, the cost of these audits diverts funds from actual innovation. This bill, this bill and bills like it, this bills like this in the federal level as well. But this kind of bill is what they call regulatory capture. So it's really ironic. The reason why these big companies like open, like open, established people want to have this kind of regulation is because they're the only ones that could afford it. Small startups like me, like mine, we couldn't afford it. We couldn't, we couldn't hire an army, army of lawyers and litigate this and do all the regulation needed. So what it means is the only people that could play this, play this game are big companies. And so I think it's the most undemocratic thing where we shift the playing field in the favor of large big tech companies like Google, right, or, or Facebook. And it basically wipes out the small startups because they're the only, only the big companies can play ball. All the small companies, they cannot. And so it creates these natural monopolies, which is just terrible, right? For the consumer, 
competition is good, right? More competition, more, more like better, you know, smartphones we get, better TVs we get, better movies we get, right? You eliminate competition, you don't get that incremental improvement, right? Handle the yeah. The only way that can handle the big regulations, this heavy, heavy-handed regulations, are the big companies. So the, the, the term is regulatory capture. Basically, it's regulatory capture in the favor of big companies, Microsoft, yeah. Google, Meta, all the big companies get a huge advantage. So a lot of people, they call it regulatory capture because the big incumbents say, we want regulation, we need to be regulated. In order to be safe, we need more regulation. And they do that because they know the only ones that can afford the regulation. And by doing that, it allows them to charge more because consumers less choice. We already have laws for bad use. If you spoof someone, there's a law about that already. If you used to defraud someone, there's already a law for it. If you do deep fake someone, there's a law against that. So there's already laws that prevent bad uses already. We should regulate the bad use, not the actual technology. It's like saying, oh, that butter knife could be used to kill someone. So let's regulate butter knives. That, that's kind of backwards. No, what you do is you regulate someone from killing someone, right? That's, that's what you regulate. And there's already laws about that. So I don't think we need another law. What we should do is we should have incentives for people to invest in AI technology and to, and to make it easier for startups to do it. There should be like programs in place to help the little guy versus programs that help the big guy. And let's not forget Silicon Valley. The heart of tech innovation could see a major slowdown. Small startups might never get off the ground due to high compliance costs. And larger firms might shift operations to more lenient regions, risking a brain drain. I think what happens is probably anyone that's doing it legitimately will probably move out of California or stop. I think, and so then people would just do it in underground if, they, if they're still in California. That means all the gym players like OpenAI, Anthropic, Meta would have to move, right? They would have to move it somewhere else. So, and then what it means is all the startups doing this would have to stop doing it or move, right? And also, it could also be something where, you know, maybe it's not enforced, right? But it's only enforced politically, right? So like maybe if you, you know, didn't contribute to the right political campaign, you now get the hammer laid down on you, right? So it's used as a, they call that lawfare, right? They use, they use this as a, as a, as a political weapon, right? And that's also fair, right? So it's it just, any way you look at it, it just makes no sense. It's not good. It's like a Hollywood trope, right? In Hollywood, they love having this, you know, Terminator like feature where AI takes over the world. But anyone that's used AI, I mean, heck, we try to use AI to make videos. We try to, try to use it to answer people's emails. And boy, it barely does that, right? Even now. So taking over the world is just so far off. And so all this craziness about AI safety is, it's almost like, you know, when people started, started flying the airplanes, right? And then suddenly they're worried about like hijacking or you know, hijacking happened like, you know, 60, 70 years later after, after the airplane was invented. It's, it's, it's almost like that right now. We're worried about safety of AI yet. It's barely got off the ground. Right. And, and we're already putting all this heavy regulation on it when it, it, it still has to have a, it hasn't had a, a major economic out, uh, impact yet. And so it's just, just starting. And it's such a shame that for such a nascent technology that People are looking to kill it, but this is what powers, especially the California economy. It's what powers the Bay Area. So it's such a shame that there's such short-sighted elected officials doing this. Senate Bill 1047 is set for a crucial vote on August 31st. If you live in California, make sure your voice is heard. Contact your representatives, spread the word, and most importantly, vote. This bill could shake the future of AI and innovation in Silicon Valley and beyond.